I'm Laura Thompson and I want to welcome you to my four week Healthier You plan. This is week one and we're going to start off with, I just want to explain to you I suppose a little bit about good health and how you can achieve it. Over the years I've seen so many different diet plans and I've done some myself and I'm, I'm aware of how confusing it is for people. There's so many different theories out there, no carbs, all protein, you know, um, fasting, there's just so many different diets. But I want to bring you back to what I call a sensible approach and just little small positive changes that you can make which will keep you healthy doesn't have to be too strenuous you know I'm not going to ask you to run 10k or, or do anything like that or fast I just want you to make some very simple changes to help improve your overall health one of the first things that I like to do when I get up in the morning is the first thing that I do is do a little bit of stretching and I'm not talking about doing any wonderful stretches it's literally I just throw my arms around and I literally just stretch my body because I want to wake my body up then what the first thing I do after that is I take a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar in, in a, some warm water and what the apple cider vinegar does is it's very good for just waking up your digestive system it also is very good if you're trying to lose a little bit of weight it does stimulate um, weight loss it also balances sugar levels as well so you know it keeps your sugar levels constant I like to use the cider vinegar that comes with the mother and so when you're buying your cider vinegar look for one that says with the mother because that's a fermented raw cider vinegar and it's better for you than, than the one that you might use in your cooking. If you're somebody who suffers from inflammation of the GI tract or you have heartburn or indigestion be a little bit cautious with cider vinegar. You could, if you wanted to, add a little bit of Manuka honey to it. That will kind of take the edge off the cider vinegar and it will help just to make it smoother so that it doesn't have any, any burning effects. Cider vinegar, even though it tastes very acidic, it actually has the opposite effect on your digestive system. It's what we call it alkalines the gut. So, you know, it really does help to um, feed and to create the right environment for your friendly bacteria. And we're going to talk a lot about your friendly bacteria in a few minutes. So, first thing you do is just wake yourself up, just do some very simple stretching. Take your cider vinegar, a tablespoon, and if you like, a little bit of manuka honey. I favor the manuka honey because manuka honey is, an, is a prebiotic. So even though it's sweet, it's actually really, really good for your digestive system. And it's antiviral, antibacterial, helps prevent our MRSA. So it's very, very useful to use um, in, your, in your daily diet as well. And of course, it will sweeten the cider vinegar a little bit for you. So start your day with that. You really want to make sure that you're having a good breakfast. Breakfast like a king. So my favorite breakfast is um, porridge oats. I like to have porridge in the morning. I, yeah, I know we can get bored having the same foods every day, but I want you to try and introduce porridge into your diet. So make your porridge on water, and when it's cooked, I want you to add a handful of blueberries, a little bit of chia seeds, I like the chia seeds because chia seeds are very high in fiber. So again, they're gonna feed that friendly bacteria in your gut, but also they contain an amino acid called L-tryptophan. And you might remember L-tryptophan is something that's in Turkey as well. And L-tryptophan is very important for relaxation, but it also is very good for your mood. So it's kind of a mood enhancer as well. So what a better way to start your daily diet than with your chia seeds and your oats. Remember, oats are also um, used for, in, in a herbal remedy, they're used for relaxation. They're also used for a, a bad stomach. There's a very good herbal remedy called Avena Sativa, which, is, which comes from oats. And Avena Sativa is used for people who have that nervous tummy, who have that kind of anxious churning in their tummy. So if you're gonna start your day with your porridge oats, and you're gonna start your day with your chia seeds, you're gonna have a nice kind of relaxed, it's gonna help with anxiety as well. The other thing I want you to add to your porridge is some protein. So I would use 
potentially favour a few walnuts or almonds. And remember that nuts and seeds are quite high in calories. So if you're watching your weight, you don't need to use too many. Just a couple of walnuts, a um, couple of almonds diced and put through your porridge very very good so on top of that what I would normally add instead of adding milk is I would add a little bit of kefir kefir is fermented cow's milk and it's very high in loads and loads of different strains of friendly bacteria and I'm going to talk about friendly bacteria soon but it's a great way of kind of just getting everything into that power breakfast Kefir is very easy to get. It's available in um, a lot of supermarkets at the moment and health food stores. And it's really, really good for just kind of um, getting that friendly bacteria. And it tastes great as well. And on top of that, I add a teaspoon of cinnamon. Cinnamon, just your normal cinnamon that you might use in your cake, is very good for controlling sugar levels in the body. And the other thing it does is it helps prevent type 2 diabetes as well. We think it might help prevent type 2 diabetes. Very good if you're somebody who has a craving for sugar. So that's your breakfast. You could, if you wanted to, top that off with a nice cup of green tea. I know it sounds a little bit boring, but green tea is fantastic for anybody who's trying to lose a little bit of weight. Um, there's a certain amount of caffeine in the green tea, which can help with your metabolism. And also it contains another amino acid called L-thionine. And L-thionine is very good for relaxation. Again, it's more for um, somebody who has too much adrenaline. So it kind of is very good if you're stressed, it helps you to relax, but it won't make you tired because the caffeine in the green tea is a great wake up call. It's a good alternative to tea and coffee. Um, so that's your breakfast, okay? So that's a really good breakfast. You could vary that over the next couple of days. Um, I sometimes, instead of having porridge, I might have some Greek yogurt with some fruit instead of blueberries i might have kiwis um, if i don't have any fresh fruit in the house sometimes i'll dice a few prunes or i'll have um, some frozen berries so you know lots of different um, variation there and diversity is important um, you could have um, muesli i have um, one that i use it's a sugar-free muesli be careful when you're buying granolas muesli sometimes they can have quite a lot of um, sugar in them and you don't want to have sugar first thing in the morning because it's going to give your sugar levels a high and then it's going to drop you and you're going to want more and more so we're going to try and reduce sugar this week so that's your breakfast um, when you finished your breakfast, you know, you're probably going to work, doing whatever, if you're not going for a, um, going to work, if you're in lockdown, try and get outside, try and get some daylight, um, sun, it's very important for our mood. And we don't get a lot of it in Ireland, but even if you get outside and have a walk, try and do a good walk every day, at least 30 minutes. Um, I know, you know, somebody said to me, you know, well, we have such bad weather. There's no such thing as bad weather. There's only bad clothes choices. So, you know, if you live in Ireland, you need to have a good raincoat and you need to have a good hat, gloves, boots, and you need to get out there and walk. Okay, so that's really the start of your, of your day. A couple of things that I wanted to just go through with you is I want you to understand how your digestive system works. As I said to you, I'm really big into the gut and I'm big into the digestive system. So one of the things that I want to talk you through just before we end is just how your digestive system works. Because sometimes it's not just about what you eat, it's how you eat. So your digestive system is very much like a conveyor belt, like a factory conveyor belt. It starts at the mouth and it ends at your bum. Um, when you think about food, when you smell food, your mouth begins to fill with saliva. And that's the brain getting you ready to begin digestion. Chew your food properly. I really can't emphasize this enough. And if you do nothing this week, 
only chew your food better, you will see good results. When you chew, the chewing action stimulates the enzymes in the stomach and hydrochloric acid, which by the way is what cider vinegar does. It stimulates hydrochloric acid in the stomach and you need hydrochloric acid to properly digest your food. So it's very important that you chew your food properly. When you chew, it sends a message to the stomach. The stomach creates the enzymes and the acid that we need, but that message goes right down into the gut and it starts to make hormones. And one of those hormones is about appetite control. So if you're chewing properly, you are much less likely to overeat and you will feel fuller. And you'll have none of that bloatedness or that heartburn or indigestion that people suffer from. A lot of people will have hiatus hernia and things like that, and that's really because they don't chew their food properly. The other thing about chewing is that it stimulates your brain. So there's actually a huge connection between um, your memory and your concentration and chewing. So um, I did a little bit of research there for a talk I was doing on positive aging. And one of the things that really fascinated me is that a lot of people, as we get older, sometimes people have dentures and you know um, that maybe they're in care homes or nursing homes, and sometimes they're typically given soft food, so they don't have to chew as much. And because they don't chew, they're not stimulating the part of the brain that's associated with memory and concentration. And research thinks that this may be a link between Alzheimer's and dementia. So chewing your food, not only will it help your digestion, help your metabolism, but it will also help your brain as well. So that's really, really important. Once the food reaches the small intestine, the first thing that it's confronted with is bacteria. You have tons and tons of bacteria, not tons, but trillions of bacteria in your gut. And some of that bacteria is good, some of it is bad. The good bacteria we refer to as the friendly bacteria. I like to go a step further. I call them the housekeepers of the gut because your good bacteria finishes off that last stage of digestion and it helps to cleanse the gut. And the gut is where your body takes the food that you've eaten and lets the good stuff into the bloodstream and sends the bad stuff out. And this is done by what I call the little bouncers of the gut. And they're your little villi. They decide what's gonna be allowed into your system and what's gonna be sent out. So they're very important that they're kept in good condition and your good bacteria will do that. If you want to maintain lots of good, good bacteria in the gut, you have to create the right pH level. And that's why I like to use the cider vinegar because not only does it cleanse the gut, it also makes sure that you have the right pH level, nice healthy environment for good bacteria to be able to replenish and to, to colonize the gut. Now, when you've got your good bacteria there, you've got to keep it there. So you've got to look at having diversity in your diet. And that's what I'm gonna talk you through over the next few weeks. We want lots of diversity. We need fiber, we need fermented foods. And I'm gonna go through those with you as we go through the various weeks. But this week, I want you to focus on your cider vinegar and your porridge oats, having some fruit in your diet, chewing your food properly as well. And one more thing that we're gonna do this week, we're gonna increase our intake of water. So as we get older, we lose our sense of thirst. So people don't feel as thirsty when they get older, particularly um, elderly people, it's always a problem. They don't drink enough water. And that's because we no longer have that same sensation of thirst. So be aware of that and try and make sure that you drink, maybe I would say at least six half pint glasses, about three pints of water a day. And one of the things that I always tell my patients to do is to chew your water. Um, which sounds really strange. But chewing your water basically means that you're gonna swish it around your mouth. So when you do this, what happens is you get great absorption. So the water just, instead of it passing quickly through your system and you have to run to the loo, when you chew it, you get better absorption and it stays in your system longer. So make sure that you chew your water. Um, try and drink again, as I said, about three pints a day that if you can. Be careful that you don't drink when you're eating. I want your taste bud or your saliva glands with all the enzymes that you have to be nice and strong when you're eating. So avoid drinking 
with your meals, drink before or after. So that's your first week, okay? Um, it's not very difficult. It's just adding some simple things into your diet. Next week, I'm gonna talk you through a little bit more about how you can feed that good bacteria and the diversity of foods that you need in your diet. And we're gonna add a few more um, things to it as well. Um, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed um, this week's first week plan. Um, do your very best. And if you like this video, please share it. And I will talk to you all next week. Stay healthy and do your very best. Thank you.